During this video tutorial, we'll be looking at how to create a dubstep sub bass sound. Before attempting this video tutorial, take a little bit of time to look at how to sidechain compression as this bass sound is very, very reliant on the sidechain compression in the track being active. Okay, let's take a look at my sidechain compression. I've quickly created a mixer before my input stage so I can have multiple modules all running through the audio input of the sidechain compressor. So on your input stage, create a combinator. Just give that a name just so you know where it is on your mixers. I'm going to call mine sub bass 4. I've got quite a few bases in this track. And then create a mixer 6.2. And then on that, create two malastroms. And just initialize both patches on that. Just takes them to their default setting. Okay, so on the top one, or one of them, create a screen for distortion unit. And then below that, on its path, create a M-class equalizer. And on the other one, just create an equalizer. On the one with the scream unit, hit both the oscillators on, give a little bit of attack and some global attack a little bit of release, make sure the sustains are both up and then change the top wave to a sawtooth and you should be able to hear this on the filter, keep it as a sine wave and hit the filter up to around 3 quarters, around 45 and the velocity up a little bit put my 25 and I'm going to put my rate at 1, 8 should sound like this. You can hear it wobbling and oscillating around the rate there if I slow it down. Slower effect. Works good on 1.8 for the time being. And on this screen distortion unit, put it on tape. Put that up to around 86. I'm going to bring my reese up just a wee bit. And then on equalizer for that. Let's bring out a little bit of 8k. Give that a little spike. Trim it up. That just brings out the saw wave nicely through the through the track. Um, on the other Malastrom, again Enable the second oscillator. Bring some global attack. Again, just as before, a little bit of attack and release. Just takes the pinch off the notes. It's not so drastic as it's played. Slides in nicer. Don't worry about a filter. And just raise a bit of the low shelf. Around 5 dB I'm going to put mine at. And you should sound like this. Now, what we're faced here with, the sine, wa uh, the sine waves are being a little bit overpowered by the saw, the sawtooth wave. So if you just go and turn that one down a little bit on your mixer and raise the sub, big sine wave there, you can feel much more power, much more power in the track. And then go ahead and close that up and right mouse and create a maximizer. This will give much more weight to the track. As you can see, we can gain a few more dB there. If you want the sub bass to be powerful, giving weight to the whole track, then just raise a bit the output and the input, hit the soft clip, and hit the lock ahead. It's a lot weightier now. You can really feel that bass a lot more. So let's take a little look at what that sounds like in the track now. I'm just going to drag my notes down. It's just a, just a one note sub bass, just, just a dirty one note on the F. And all I've done to create some dynamics with it, I've just put a little flicks, the pitch all the way down to the bottom, which is more with my pitch wheel on my keyboard. 
so let's take a listen to that. If it feels like it's stealing power from the track, just, just trim it down a little bit. Don't be afraid to take a little bit off your maximizer. And there we go. That's a nice subtle or not so subtle sub bass, depends on how loud you want it. Uh, don't be afraid to play with the velocity more. You can get a sharper, a sharper whip out of the uh, oscillation if you raise the velocity a little bit more. Also, don't be afraid to maybe experiment with your distortion unit. sub-bass.